the Safer Social Media Show. And today our question is, do social media platforms limit our self-expression? We'll be back in a bit to talk about this, so don't go away. Stay right where you are. And if you think someone else would be fine, this interesting, then do let them know. So sit tight. We're back in a bit. Everyone and welcome to the Safer Social Media Show. You're on the Safer Social Media Show. Let me turn down my volume for a second because I'm also got my mobile phone going next to me. Apologies, but hello, <laughs> welcome. So, on the Safer Social Media Show, we talk about how we as individuals can gain the ability to take a more critical look at what we see online and how we can become more selective about how we use that information and how that leads to freedom of disinformation. And today our conversation is about whether or not social media platforms limit our self-expression. So my name is Bridget Limbanda, if you've not met me before, and my co-host is Alison Diamond. Alison, welcome to the show. Why, thank you. <laughs> I love our conversation for today. So today we're talking about do social media platforms shape how we respond? I like that word, shape. Yeah, I th I think that that's I think that that's descriptive of what they do. They mm -hmm. they they shape our responses. Mm -hmm. But before we dive into our conversation, I want I would like to share a good news story. You know, we always we always talk about how bad social media can get at times, and sometimes it gets really bad. But I believe we should also share good news stories sometimes. And while I was preparing, setting up for the show, I came across a story that totally warmed my heart. Um, it was it was on Twitter because we had a Twitter chat earlier. So I saw this while we were on Twitter. And the story is about a, a single mum who posted, and she's not – She's only been on Twitter for a year, and she says she doesn't use Twitter very often. So she's kind of green to social media, and, you know, she says, you know, data costs a lot of money, so she doesn't go on Twitter that often even. Mm -hmm. But she found herself in a really awkward situation. She ran out of electricity. Mm -hmm. She had no electricity, and she f felt too ashamed to go and ask her neighbors single mom with two kids at school and what she did was she put onto her Twitter status a photograph of her electricity meter showing that there's zero units. She's got no electricity and she said could anybody possibly help her with um, electricity for 10 South African rands which is uh, less than a dollar, okay? So that was her request. And it turns out that she was flooded with people reaching out and buying her electricity hmm. and sending her money. I mean, how heartwarming is that? She says three days later, people were still buying electricity for her to the point where she said, you know, stop, I've got enough now. <laughs> and people, you know, were pouring out to her to the extent that she could pay, I think the article said, her school fees that were behind for a year for one of her kids. Wow. That's wonderful. And, it, you know, it just, it just warmed my heart. And I thought, wow, if there was a good news story, this is it. Definitely. I love it. 
<laughs> oh my goodness so to our getting back to our conversation for today so if you're joining us please do join the conversation tell us your thought ask us your questions again we're talking about whether or not social media shapes our responses what are your what are your opening thoughts on that um, for me, I would definitely say yes. I'm a sociologist, so of course I'm always interested in how uh, our environment shapes our behavior. And um, social media architecture is no different than um, the built environment. Um, you know, the, the features that we see and that we interact with um, have influence over what we do. So um, take the like button. You know, it seems like this innocent button, but um, there's no dislike button right there's a like button no uh, yeah so we're that's that's our choice now we do have reactions now they added reactions because people did say the like was not enough but if you look at the reactions that we have there you know we're all kind of saying the same thing when we use those buttons right they're, they're we're kind of shaped into this uh you know, one way of reacting to something. If it doesn't really fit, eh, there's really no other choice. If you don't want to actually make a comment, um, you do have to choose what's available. So um, yeah, we do kind of uh, lose our own voice when we resort to using what's presented to us by the platform. I think that's, uh, I mean, it's meaningful. It may not seem to be a major issue, but when you think of millions of people using the same like button, uh, I mean, think of all the nuance you lose. Yeah, I must say, you know, sometimes you kind of feel like you're in a bit of a, pushed into a corner to choose one of those reactions. Mm -hmm. um, so that the person knows you've seen it. You know, sometimes you're in a rush and you kind of think, which one do I choose now? None of these actually fit the, emotion um, mm -hmm. or my acknowledgement, um, you know, and I think we, we spoke about that briefly yesterday. So I see on Twitter, for example, people will be just because there's so many nuances that could go with a like button. I see people on Twitter will say that, look, it's it's like does not mean I agree with you or like is not a acknowledgement or anything, I'm just liking something to you as a, a way of curating my content. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and people use like for so many different reasons that, of course, that like button can't adjust to. So uh, Brigetti might post something that I know nothing about. It's going on in Cape Town, not Johannesburg. We live in Cape Town. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, she might post something that's going on there and I don't really know what she's talking about, but I want to acknowledge that I am seeing it. I find it interesting. So I might hit the like, but maybe I, if I really knew what the conversation was about, I wouldn't really click like, maybe I don't agree with her view, you know, but I am reading what she's saying and I'm, you know, appreciating that she's talking about something. So, uh, you know, we were kind of going back and forth on what would be better than a like button. So when you talk about, you know, I was I was thinking about this right now. Um, I may interpret the reason why I'm using the like button in a certain way. But other people, either the person who posted it or other people that have access to that post may impute a different meaning to me liking it other than mm -hmm. my intended response. Right. So that to me is a bit of a dilemma, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And, uh, you know, say, I mean, politics, that's a big issue, right? So what if I've been encouraging people to vote and several people say, I wouldn't mm -hmm. vote it today, but I didn't vote for the candidate that I'm for. Do I press like? And when I say like, if, I, if they're saying I voted for blah, 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 I'm so glad I went out and voted. You know, thanks for reminding me, Allison. I'm like, I mean, I'm glad you voted, but if I press like, 
Am I liking that you said you voted for this candidate? Or am I liking that, you know, you, you, you can't really use like in all situations. And I also feel that, you know, by forcing these kind of reactions or acknowledgements on us, we are by default doing that to people in our social circle of influence. Mm -hmm. Because, um, you know, I've been pushed into a corner to respond in a certain way and I've chosen that emoticon for whatever reason. But now Johnny comes along and Johnny says, this is a little bit awkward, um, but Brigetti liked it and Alison liked it. So I guess I'll take like two. Mm -hmm. You know, so you right. have that kind of chain reaction going on as well. Yeah, yeah. And some people interpret likes differently. The more likes I get, the more popular I am. I don't care why you like me. I just want to collect those likes, you know, and that is, you know, something that leads to likes being abused. But also, I think the other aspect um, of it is the fact that that taps into the algorithms and mm -hmm. so people will ask you to like something because it'll rank their post it'll rank their video or whatever yes. it is they posted yeah um based on the amount of likes that they have you know so mm -hmm. it shows this popularity it's like you know, you know the popularity is determined by how many likes or hearts you can get yeah. And that is completely devoid of emotion. That yeah, there's really no meaning. That may be, yeah. Yeah, and then the awkward thing about that is uh, how many people have sent you a request, please like my page? Well, once you like somebody's page, you kind of get auto-drafted into, you know, the messages that they're sending out and questions that they're asking, and you kind of feel obligated to show support in some way because that person's your friend. And yet, you know, you don't care about the product or the service or whatever it is that they're doing that you might not even like it. So the like button, to me, it's just not appropriate for all these different reasons. So I, I just, yeah, like button is a, is a problem. It's, it's, it's the only option we have and yet it doesn't fit our needs. Are there any of the other buttons that you struggle with? I mean, I, I think it's clear as daylight that um, I would say, apart from everything else, the like button in the absence of a dislike button um, is not a great option. <laughs> now, you had a, a, a comment today in our Twitter chat. Um, you said, how about just a noted button? Yeah, I, I, I would like to see that because, you know, noted is kind of, I, I acknowledge that I saw your comment, mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah. it's like when you're SMSing somebody and, and, you know, there's a, there's a read, it's like, a it would act like a read receipt. Exactly. Like, mm -hmm. You know, I've, I've seen it, but I'm not ready to respond. Can I get back to you on right. that? when I have time to respond more intelligently or I've mm -hmm. had time to ponder over my response. Exactly, um, you're not endorsing it. That's a good, that's a good word. You're not <laughs> endorsing it. <laughs> yeah, and um, you know, that whole fake news and disinformation issue is also wrapped up in that like button because if you like somebody's post because they're your friend and they've posted disinformation, guess what? You are now seen as endorsing that misinformation. So if you're if you're endorsing fake uh, health products and inaccurate medical advice and you know safety warnings and all that, it's it's not a good thing. Everybody can see that you you know clicked like on it and it's seen as support. So that's another thing about like that we can't control. You know, we press like for one reason, it's interpreted differently by, a, you know, entirely different audience. Yeah, no, no, I, t I totally agree with you that, you know, that endorsement thing is quite, um, is quite hectic. Mm 
Mm-hmm. So I want to just reach out to our audience. Let us know where in the world you you joining us from. Tell us where you you know which country you be watching from, and if you have any thoughts on the topic that we're talking about today, um, let us know. If you've got any questions you want us to address in this regard, tell us in the comments. Um, we can see your comments live. We'd like to get your input. Well, so again, we're talking about. Um, do social media platforms limit our self-expression is our topic. Now, the other buttons that we've that we've got there um, is the heart button. And, mm-hmm. and we spoke about that earlier as well. Yes. What would, what would you use? What do you use it for? I'll tell you what I use it for. What do you use it for? <laughs> okay. The heart button is kind of... It's sort of like the like button. It's a little uh, difficult to challenge. Um, I might use the heart button to show um, sympathy or empathy. I might use it to show that I love what somebody posted or I love what they did. Um, sometimes it's to say like, oh, you know, like maybe there's a, a, a little, maybe somebody posted something their child did or said something really cute or a little baby or something. I mean. I mean, love is really watered down in this case. We all know what love really is. So you don't really love the things that you're using the heart for, but you want to show something more than like. What about you? I think for me, it's pretty much the, the, the same. You know, it's it's something that I, um, how do I define that? That I strongly like? <laughs> Or that I'm, you know, that I am ecstatic about. I'm. I, I want to show extreme happiness um, about it. You know, either about the event mm-hmm. um, or announcement or the person. You know, or something great that they did, or mm-hmm. someone had, you know, did exceptionally well in something. Or as mm-hmm. you said, you know, they show acute. Um, fur baby, or you know, a real baby. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but then yeah. you know, the whole thing with with these buttons. Um, also, and I want to say hello to Victor. Victor says, "What makes you optimistic?" Um, is that related to our our you know? The topic. Topic. <laughs> let let me know. I don't you know I don't want to respond inappropriately to what you said, Victor. So if you're asking that in relation to our topic, then um, we can we can give you an answer or we'll answer it a bit later. So just let us know. So we're not off the mark in our response to you. <laughs> so the other thing with regards to um, you know, how we respond and how our responses are shaped mm-hmm. um, is also problematic when not just as a means of responding to the immediate post, but when it gets shared right. and reinterpreted. Now, it may, the original post may be in your timeline, for example, with people you generally would know about at least. But once that's shared outside of that circle, you have no idea of who it's shared with and how that may be interpreted Mm -hmm. by people who really don't know you from a bar of soap. Right. Yeah. And you know what, Projecti, just going along with that, um, and I think you even mentioned this the other day, we were talking about how people will share content they did not create and sometimes that stuff is fraudulent because once they have farmed enough likes, they will change that page. So now you've endorsed something that you don't even know you're associated with. And so that's another danger of liking and hurting something that you know was created by somebody you don't know. So sorry to jump in there, but that that reminded me of you know other audiences seeing your association with content. It's a slippery slope and, and a very dangerous one because, um, you know, someone 
may not have encountered you on social media before and now they meet you for the first time and you know what do you generally do when you've not when you didn't know someone but you think I'd like to explore the possibility of connecting with this person so you're going to check them out on social media and so if you see that this person liked something that you know is not factual or is fake news um, it may dissuade you from connecting with the person mm -hmm. um, you know and and you really have no way of knowing what was behind it yeah um, and I so I think you know I think I want to reiterate what we've been talking about before and that is we want to move away from this culture or conditioning of hitting the like and share button with impunity without giving it a second thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and maybe in replace, you know, to replace that, we could get back to actually using words. <laughs> you know, it's so easy to just click something. I mean, imagine a conversation with somebody in real life. There, there's no equivalent to the like. I mean, would you just go like that to somebody if you like what they're saying? No, we say something, but <laughs> we don't do that online, you know? So. I know it's it's um I think you know it's it's just conditioning via the social media platforms. Yeah. yeah. Um has it made had it has it made us lazy to communicate? I I think it's actually allowed us to communicate where we really wouldn't have. You know, I mean if I'm standing on the street and uh with a friend of mine and then maybe somebody comes along and you know they get into a an argument I'm going to I'm going to support my friend but in real life am I going to jump in there and and you know get myself involved and possibly targeted no but online I could click like on everything my friend says to show support you know and not really think twice that's my friend I'm going to click like it's so easy but in real life you know there you would think twice about your response and what the situation is like and you know what you really want to contribute to that like in real life i would walk away i would take my friend and we'd leave <laughs> but uh, it's a totally different world online do you think you know that's an interesting thing do you think people disassociate on some level with who they really are in real life and the online life you know is it do people does has social media contributed to us creating two personas of ourselves you know yeah. an, an online an online me and an offline me yeah i i would say that i i would say that to some extent there are definitely things i do online because it exists online you know i mean and it's it is different. I I may I I'm, I belong to some Facebook groups. There are meetups in real life that I don't go to, and I could, but I'll join a, a meetup, so to speak, online and kind of poke around and meet some people and talk, um, or whatever you want to call it. But it's not on video. It's all you know, text and emoticons and emoji and all that. Um, you know, why aren't I going to a, a live group that meets at the same time in my neighborhood? It's, mm. it's strange what I'm willing to do online that I won't do in my real life. Yeah. I, I don't know what all the answers are, you know, but I, I, would, I would like to venture into saying that we need more education around this, um, more empowerment for people who who use social media more awareness um, you know, yeah more awareness you know mm -hmm. uh, other than allowing ourselves to be so conditioned by the platforms mm -hmm. um, because what makes the platforms is actually us if we were not there interacting the platforms would be useless <laughs> you know That's so why are we not turning it on its head? Why are we not saying what we want? Um, why are we allowing them to mold us, to mold our responses? And yeah, yeah. yeah, I would advocate 
maybe bypassing it. Try it for a week, you know, bypass those buttons and say what you want to say. Instead of clicking like, say, I really like that, you know, whatever your opinion is and make a comment about it. Start a conversation. That's something that I think is really, really lacking now in social media. Um, we share content and we just leave it there. We don't even con comment on the content ourselves, you know? Um, or we might say, oh, this is a really pretty picture, you know? And not that there's anything wrong with that, but you know, what if you posted the picture and actually said what it did to you? You know, when I look at this, it reminds me of blah, 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 and tell a little story. You know, that is what gets conversations going. But right now it's like, you post a picture and the responses are, oh, I love it. It's so pretty. Ha ha. You know, and that's it. That's not how we really talk. It's not it's not real interaction. It's almost like um, fake interaction. Yeah, it's just it's, uh, for social media interaction. It. It's that digital life. Yeah. Now, I, I'd really like to see, a, you know, a change. And again, I'm going to say it's one of the reasons I like live streaming because you're talking. It's it's more like a conversation um, yeah. that you're having in real life. Mm -hmm. it's, or it's the closest you're ever going to get to a real life um, conversation as opposed to me um, hiding or thinking that I'm hiding behind a picture of sorts and, yeah. you know, being more flippant about or, you know, how I respond to mm -hmm. things online. Whereas if you're looking someone in the eye, um, you are less likely to be rude to that person or be dismissive um, of that person. You know, you're going to be nicer about how you interact. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, you know, we were so, laughing earlier about, um, you know, newscasters who do the news and are, they've got their nice ties or their nice blouses on top and they're wearing pajama pants and you know thong slippers or something on the bottom you can't see it um and we were laughing at that but when you think about it when we're on social media and when it's not video you might be laying in bed you might be waiting for the bus you might be you know in your you know ratty pajamas nobody could see that you know and it does make a difference in how you interact online because you're not really there you know would you be dressed like that talking to people in real life if you were it would be people that you knew people that you were close to but it wouldn't be these strangers you wouldn't go to a meetup looking like that and i think all of that contributes to the way that we interact online it does create that that digital um interaction that that real virtual real, that <laughs> imitation of real, you know, it's, I don't know, it's surreal, I guess. It's, 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 it's very, it's a strange world that we've created online. I'd say, so I think a good question to end on is how do you show up online? I like you know, that. Mm -hmm. How do you show up online as your authentic self or do you show up online um, under the guise of a pseudonym? A different a different version of you mm -hmm. um, you know how authentic are you online are you are you who you are or are you who you say you are um, online or are your posts are your comments um, are they modeled by what the platform wants or are they modeled by what you think other people want to hear mm -hmm. um, to let yeah. us know in the comments that you know help us help shape our next conversation <laughs> tell us in the comments what you think all right well it was really nice having this conversation and it doesn't end because everything we talk about is related to social media and how we can improve it make it safer make it more enjoyable and um you know just improve the quality of social media interaction so yeah the conversation will continue We'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> back next so week. So thanks, everyone. Back next week. Thanks for joining us, everyone. As usual, we always have a great time online and hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching. And from me, Brigitte in Cape Town, it's goodbye for now. And from Allison in Las Vegas, Nevada, adios. <laughs>